and welcome on this third Sunday of Advent as we hear St. Paul tell us to rejoice and to give thanks in all circumstances. The writer Be Wendell Berry once wrote, Be joyful, though you have considered all the facts. That thought is certainly in keeping with Paul's message today. During this busy time of year, there are ample opportunities for giving thanks, filled with the joys of family and friends. But there are also the other circumstances of our lives, all the facts that can make it difficult to be thankful or joyful. Christmas can be a painful time as we remember those no longer with us, but even in that sadness, God calls us to find small grains of gratitude and offer them back in thanksgiving for the gift of life and for those whom we have loved. Even in pain, we can thank God. On this Gaudete or Rejoice Sunday, let us give thanks to God in all circumstances. Tonight we are remembering and praying for Marjorie Honor, and tomorrow our Mass is for Gary Steer. Our sanctuary light will burn this week in memory of Joseph and Alan Spreckelson. I think I might have had the wrong weekend last week. Last week, candle was for Kenny Walkie. Today's second collection is for the Retirement Fund for Religious. Our United Catholic Appeal, we have met almost 50% of our goal at this time. There are extra pledge cards in the vestibule and in the hall. As you know, our Christmas Masses are scheduled for 4 uh, Christmas Eve and 9 o'clock Christmas Day. I am asking that if you plan to attend a Christmas Mass, to consider possibly coming to the Christmas Day Mass. You know how crowded the Christmas Eve Mass can be, and as you probably realize, we can't put up extra chairs and we must social distance. When we have reached our capacity in church, uh, which is maybe 80 people, we will direct people to the hall. We're hoping to get at least 100, maybe a little more, in the hall. So again, if you don't have any strong reason for coming to Christmas Eve, I suggest you come on Christmas Day. Let us now rise and celebrate this Sunday of Advent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us always. I ask that you respond to me once again, Lord, come and save us. You're, you came as God's anointed, bringing the good news to the oppressed. Lord, come and save us. Lord, come and save us. You come to stand among us as the one we long for but do not know. Lord, come and save us. Lord, come and save us. You will come as the God of peace to accomplish our sanctification. Lord, come and save us. Lord, come and save us. Eternal God, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus. Grant us the wisdom to see your purpose and openness to hear your will, that we too may prepare the way for Christ, who is coming in power and glory to establish his kingdom of peace and justice, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. 
Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with our worship and glad rejoicing. For we ask this through our Lord Jesus, who lives one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord in a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me, and as holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul rejoices in my God. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. John was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, then who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Now some Pharisees had also came to him. They asked John, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize you with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not even worthy to untie. Now all of this happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Whoops, I forgot to take my paper out of my jacket. <laughs> Just a moment. Okay, I think I'm ready to go now. <laughs> Who are you? These words are from our gospel this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> the author, Elizabeth Keebler Ross, who wrote a lot about death and dying, said these words. People are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out. But then the darkness sets in. Their true beauty is revealed then only if there is a light from within. Yes, I guess, you know, we can see quite clearly that the sun is sparkling off the windows and making the windows really radiate something of beauty. But then when things are dark, well, only a light from within. You know, I had a real experience of that darkness and when we were kids, I was a teenager at the time, and we went to visit uh, uh, Mammoth Cave. I don't know if you know Mammoth Cave. It's a very big cave. It's out in, in Kentucky. It takes a little, a few hours to get there, but it certainly is worth it. It's quite a sight to see. And of course, when we got there, we got 
with one of the tours and the tours take you through all the sites to see in the cave and one of the places that they showed you was this huge opening they called it the cathedral it, the, it was just huge and it was backlit by lights all around it. it was really pretty and at one point they turned off the lights I never in my world had such an experience of what complete darkness was all about. I couldn't even see my hand in front of my face. I didn't even know where it was. I was afraid to move or do anything because I didn't know where I was going. I mean, it was total darkness. You couldn't see anything. Well, I guess that's a meaning that we could add to what John is talking about here today when he says I have come to testify to your light I have come to testify to someone who's going to be the light that will show you the way too often the world is blinded can't see it all everything is dark and gloomy everything is depressing Everything just doesn't seem to be kind or loving or caring or anything. You can't see where to even to go in the middle of all of this. So confusing. So tragic. Well, John, who is questioned today, who are you? Which is the same question they will ask of Jesus. Who are you? Well, John says, I have come to testify to a light. A light that will guide you. A light that will show you the way. A light that will enlighten you. That you may see who you are created to be. Who will enlighten others. Because I am a person that reaches out to brighten the lives of others around me. You know, in this time of year, uh, you can go down the road and you see plenty of houses have all these beautiful lights all over them. You know, I just truly admire all the effort that people put into these things. It seems like almost this year with everything going on, I don't know, it just seems to me like there's more houses that are decorated or, or lit up or maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's my imagination, but it sure seems like it. I mean, I have a couple little lights I put in the window. I mean, kind of had some light at Christmas, but boy, it's just nothing compared to some of these houses that I see so lit up. And, and that's good, because we, that light reminds us, hopefully, that there's someone in that house that is inspired by the light of Christ. It reminds us that we are to be a light, too to light others the way that Jesus has come to show us. Yes, that's what John has come to do. He has come to testify. I'm telling you, the light is close to you. Actually, the light is, as Jesus says, since he's already come, the light is within us. And Jesus will help us to bring forth nothing but goodness to show others the way to a Christmas celebration, perhaps, that our world so desperately needs. Who are you? Well, it is the light of Christ within us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us now stand as once again we profess our beliefs. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Again, we bring our needs to our Father in heaven. For the church, that we may always find joy through our relationship with Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all public officials, that God will move them to address the needs of the poor, the homeless, the elderly, and the children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace between nations and within cities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who grieve, May they know the tender compassion of God and find joy and peace in the midst of their sorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are working to defeat the coronavirus and for all health care workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering economically and in need of assistance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially our parishioners, that God's healing love may renew and strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Marjorie Honor, Gary Steer, and Charlie Simon, and the needs we now speak to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, enlighten every corner of our lives and of our world that we all may welcome the coming of the light, Christ our Savior, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise, the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all this holy church. May this holy sacrifice of our worship this day, O Lord, be offered to you forever, so that it may complete what was begun in the mystery of your love, powerfully accomplishing for us your saving work. For we ask this through Christ the Lord who lives one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that always and everywhere we give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold the coming of Jesus. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed Jesus' presence when at last he came to live among us. It is by his gift 
that already we rejoice in the mystery of his nativity so that he may ever find us watchful in prayer, rejoicing in his coming. And so with angels and archangels and all the people in heaven, we praise you again as we sing. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, for Jesus has come in your name. Jesus is the word that comes to bring salvation, a hand that you can extend to sinners, a way by which your peace is offered to our world. When we ourselves had turned away from you, you brought us all back to you, O Lord, so that understanding the way of Jesus, we might love each other. And now, celebrating this reconciliation Christ has come to bring us, we ask that you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become for us the body, the blood of Jesus Christ who went about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, Jesus took bread into his hands. He gave you thanks. He said a blessing. He broke the bread, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing in his hands. He then confessed your unending mercy for all of us. Then he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> Celebrating once again this memorial of the death and resurrection of Jesus, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you, Father in heaven, what you have given to us, a sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask that you accept us also, together with Jesus, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his spirit. For it is a spirit that takes away everything that separates us from each other. May he make your church this sign of unity, an instrument of peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, and all of your people. For just as you have gathered us now at this table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her loving spouse, with your blessed apostles and all of the saints, especially St. Maurice, 
along with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us all to share this unending banquet of unity in a new heaven, a new earth, where the fullness of your peace ever shines with the light of the divine in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Once again, let us pray to our Father in heaven who sent to us the light of Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming again of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of all in your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The coming of the light of Christ surely brings peace in our homes and in our world. Maybe a little sign of peace for each other. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
flowing like a river, flowing out of you and me, flowing out into the desert, setting all the captives free. Wish you a very pleasant evening this evening. It's nice, nice weather we're having, really. And hopefully that uh, this coming week as well, that there may be lights on the outside of people's houses, but it never compares to the walking lights that we all can be in the lives of each other. Let us now stand and pray. We ask once again for your mercy, Lord, that this divine food may cleanse us of our faults, preparing us for this coming feast, where the light of Christ will come to live among us forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
the shine. 